All right, hello everybody and welcome to this Zoom webinar. I'm glad you could join me today. My name is Dina Peterson and I'm an instructor here at the Bemis School of Art at the Fine Arts Center of Colorado Springs at Colorado College. Um, I'm here today with Kim Sweeney, who's behind the camera, to be my lovely assistant. She is the membership man manager at the Fine Arts Center of Colorado College. So welcome everybody. Um, I am also an instructor at the Bemis School of Art. I've been here for, I don't know now, about four or five years maybe. Um, but I've been teaching and painting for probably 25 to 30 years now. I'm predominantly an oil painter, so that's mostly what I teach. And um, today we're gonna to be doing a demo based on my work for the film Loving Vincent, which was, I, I did the work for the film. Uh, the studios were based in, in Poland. Um, so I did that in 2016, and I believe it was released in 2017, and it was nominated for Best Animated Film um, at the Academy Awards in 2017. So I'm real proud of that. It didn't win, lost out to Coco, but um, it was an amazing project. It was great to be a part of it. Um, I, uh, it was probably my biggest claim to fame. And so today what I'm gonna do is just kind of do a quick demo of one of the scenes that I created for the film. Um, the film is actually uh, the first full length feature, totally hand painted animated film. So that's what makes it really unique. And that's why I'm so proud of it. Um, every scene in the film was completely hand painted with oil paints. Um, and I'm gonna just give you an idea of, of what that was like today. Um, during the webinar, if you want, if you have a question, feel free to go ahead and type it in the Q&A section uh, of the webinar, of the Zoom screen. You usually can find that down at the bottom of your screen. Type those questions away and Kim will help monitor those and she can ask me those as I'm painting. Hopefully I can talk and paint at the same time. Not always so good at that. Um, but just a little background on the film before I get started. Um, I worked in Poland for about six months on the film. And I did, I did five scenes for the film. My favorite one is the We Feel With Crows scene. And that's the scene where Armand, who's the narrator of the film, the guy that wears the yellow jacket in the whole film. And they actually had a yellow jacket that the actor wore um, that's still around somewhere. And he, he picks up a stick and he throws it out into the field and it makes all the crows fly up into the sky. So that was my favorite scene to do. It was the director's, one of her favorite scenes. So it was real important to her that everything be correct and be as close to the original painting as possible. I'm doing today just a small detail of Van Gogh's very famous painting called Wheat Field with Crows. It's sometimes called Crows Over the Wheat Field. It was one of his last paintings. It used to be thought that it was his final painting before he died. It was painted in 1890. They now think that maybe Tree Roots was his final painting before he died. Um, he painted in 1890. The original painting is a double square format. Of course, for the film, they had to modify sort of the size of his paintings and make them fit um, all into the same sort of proportion for, for a movie screen. So, um, great, okay, good. So you're seeing that now. I'm just gonna do a detail of that painting because we only have about an hour, less than an hour. And I'm just gonna focus on this part of the scene. Of course, in the film, you won't see the crows there right away. Uh, they actually emerge when Armand throws that stick into the field and they start coming out of the field. So hopefully I could get far enough to, um, to show you that process of how I might take a crow and have it start coming out of the field. And how this would work is we had a camera up on um, sort of a scaffolding behind us and, and we were all in these little cubicles in the studio in Poland. And uh, I would paint the first frame of this scene. So the frame, the scene that would have Armand in it with there's a chair and a bag there. I'm not gonna include all that because I don't have time. And so the first frame took me probably a week to get right. All the colors had to be correct. Um, and then once that first frame was completed, the camera would take a picture of it. And then, um, yeah, and, and she's showing the animation now. So the camera would take a picture of the first frame. Then as the scene moved, as Armand moved and he picked up the stick and began to throw it, um, you, I would scrape him away and repaint each thing that was moving. So um, 
I think there were a total of, you can see around the edge of the, of this, the board that we painted on. Of course, in the film, they would zoom in and just cut it off. So it was just the, the, the painting that you see. But there were probably about 193 frames for this particular scene. Um, and it goes pretty quickly, but it took me probably, it took me more than a week to paint this scene. So let me get started then. And I'll, I'll just sort of start a block in here. And what I have here is just a canvas board, which is similar to what we worked on. And what we would do is we would tone our board. It was just a white piece of kind of masonite or something. They were all the same size. I think they were probably, I don't know, 26 inches by 30 inches, something like that. And we would, we would tone the board in a, in a color that was sort of the color of maybe raw linen canvas. Um, so I've got sort of a yellow ochre with a, a little bit of white in there um, on, this, on this canvas. It's just acrylic. You can put oils on top of acrylic. And just to save time, I've just kind of lightly sketched in where the elements of the painting are going to be. And this is exactly how I approach the painting for the, uh, for the film. And so I'm just going to kind of block in some large areas of color. And I have a lot of paint squeezed out. You can see that. Um, the colors I'm using are titanium white, cad yellow, cad yellow white, I think, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, phthalo green, uh, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and Prussian blue, which I think these colors are very similar to what Van Gogh used. We had some other colors that I don't have on my palette here that I didn't have, but these will get close enough. So the predominant color in this scene is really just a yellow ochre. So I'm just going to kind of, and honestly, I'm not sure if Van Gogh would have done this. He was a very direct painter. So I'm just trying to save time by sort of locking in these areas of color. But the reason I have so much paint squeezed out of my canvas is that uh, he painted with an impasto technique, which basically is very thick paint, sometimes straight from the tube. He would often not even mix colors, just straight from the tube. He's quite a colorist. He was really a visionary for his time. He's considered a post-impressionist uh, because he had such a unique approach to painting. And for the film, we had to do a test shot for each color that we put on here. So let's say I wanted to put, you know, some of this wheat field. And you can see that there's some strokes of burnt sienna in that. So I might put a, a stroke of burnt sienna on there. I take the camera, we have to take a photo of it, send it into the computer software, and we put it up on our screen because the colors on the screen were so different than what we saw to our naked eye, they were often not right. So when we got a color right, we had to mix up a whole bunch of it, which is not normally how I paint. I sort of paint and, and uh, mix at the same time. So now I'm just gonna kind of block in that road, which to me is just almost a bird sienna. And I'm gonna start sort of thin so that it'll dry a little quicker and I can build up the color on top. And again, he painted very directly. So he would sometimes just paint right over the colors that he'd already put on there. Um, he usually painted directly from life. So on plein air, as they say, in the open air. And he wasn't worried about exactly representing what he saw. He, he said that he wanted to paint what he felt more than what he saw, more than what was really there. So again, I'm just doing kind of a quick block in. So for the film, we would sort of study, you know, the brushwork. And um, so some areas he had a little bit bigger brush stroke, like in the sky, uh, his brush strokes were just a little bit bigger. And right now I'm not gonna worry, I'm just gonna kind of block in. And he would start, as most oil painters do, he would start with his darkest areas first and then sometimes layer color on top of that. So I'm sort of seeing here that, you know, it was a little bit darker at the top of the sky. This was a stormy sky. You know, they say that he painted this because he was, he was feeling blue and very moody. And so, you know, you just, he was not being very exact. He was 
again, painting with a lot of passion, painting very quickly. Of course, for the film, uh, it, it was very difficult because with animation, uh, my supervisor there was an animator. Most of the people who worked on the film were painters. So we had to learn how to animate. There were about 125 of us from all over the world that worked on the film. And my supervisor said, you know, animation is concentration. So it's a completely different animal than the way I painted and the way Van Gogh painted, which was just to just paint with a lot of passion and just get it on there. So now I'm moving to, I think I'll get this cloud shape in. I haven't started using a whole lot of paint yet. But this is why, you know, when I teach classes, I, I like to paint. I like thick paint also. Um, just kind of the way I like to paint. So I always squeeze out a lot of paint when I teach classes. I, I really have trouble with people not really using enough paint. He's sort of very deliberate with his brush marks. And I know that that's too, that's probably too, uh, not quite the right color, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm just gonna get that locked in. But you can see he's sort of feeling the shape of the cloud and he's, He's not just painting the cloud, he's kind of painting the wind. It's a stormy sky. So he's painting the movement that he's feeling. And where he painted this, um, well, I guess he was in Auvergne at this time, but I know that down in Southern France, when he stayed in the uh, uh, St. Paul the institution where he, committed himself when he was struggling with mental health issues. They would get these terrible winds called a mistral and very, very strong winds. Um, and he would paint that. And some people think that, that uh, his swirly skies, you know, um, starry night and so on, that he was trying to represent the wind. Uh, question, uh, how are you so Ah, uh, that's that's a very good question. Oh, repeat it. Yeah, um, but there's a question about how was I selected? How was I chosen to work on the film? So um, when I was, uh, my youngest daughter had just gone off to college and my middle daughter, um, I had seen this animation on Facebook that was just amazing to me. It was, it was, it was so unique. It looked hand painted and it was, of, it was about Vincent. Um, and so I, I became immediately intrigued. And my middle daughter said that they were still looking for artists to work on the film. So I just, what the heck, I just decided to um, send a, uh, I sent a link to my website and a nice email and said, this is, you know, amazing. And I'd, I'd be interested in learning more about this, I'd be interested in helping out. At the time, I didn't know that the film studio was actually in Gdansk, Poland. Um, so, uh, and so then I, I received an email back where they said, you know, we think you might be a good fit for this. When can you come to Poland and take a test to see if you can do this? Because again, the people that were hired for the film were painters, we weren't animators. So they had to sort of feel, you know, decide if we could, um, handle the animation part, which was a whole new animal. I'm going to try to show you some of that after I get this sort of locked in. And so I did pass the test. Um, we had about a three-week training period there, and um, they we had to we did we animated some scenes, obviously that weren't used in the film, um, but they rated how we did, and the director would look at all our work, and um, I'm. I'm made it through that hurdle. So then I was part of the actual team that got to paint for the film. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we had the training period and, and so we had some time to sort of be evaluated on, on just kind of capturing his style. That was the big thing the director wanted was just to make sure we were painting in his style. And it was all a tribute to Van Gogh. That's why the director, Dorota Kobiela, who was, raised in Poland and trained as a painter in Poland, um, she really wanted it to be a tribute to his work. And, and I mean, to do this 
this hand painted animation thing was just, I mean, amazing leap of faith. You know, they didn't have investors in the beginning. So um, that's why they put that animation out there early on was so that they could, could get some investors interested in the film and the project. And during the course of uh, working on the film, they started with mostly Polish painters and they just got extremely burnt out. I mean, because this takes so long, you have to be so patient with this type of, <laughs> of painting and, and making sure not only does it have the feel of Van Gogh, but that it also, um, the animation is smooth and correct. So it's very intense work and the Polish painters kind of burnt out. So eventually um, they opened it up to painters from around the world. And then, you know, that was a good thing because we ended up, you know, helping to promote the film and so on. So. But I have to say, even for this demo, I still find myself sitting in that little cubicle back in Poland, being nervous that the director isn't going to like it. <laughs> and then I just said, the scene took me probably a week just to get the first frame because it's so iconic and the colors had to be right. I think I spent a few days just blocking in the sky only to have the director say, well, I don't think it's quite the right color. So I had to scrape it all off and start again. You know, as a painter, that's a good thing. I mean, you really do learn how to let go of things and not have them be too precious, especially if they're not right or if you don't like it. So speaking of the sky, I'm going to do a little more work on that. So again, I'm, I'm switching to a little bit bigger brush now. Um, you know, Van Gogh did sort of think about some of the strokes of the wheat in the foreground. Of course, I cropped this some, would be bigger than the ones, you know, far in the back of the field. And cool story, um, about a year and a half ago, maybe about a year ago, no, two years ago now, I was asked um, to come and teach a workshop in France, in Van Gogh's France. So it was the first time I'd ever seen these places that he painted. So I actually got to go and stand in this very wheat field where this was painted. And I have to tell you, I, you know, people say, well, he didn't paint realistically. He exaggerated colors. I don't think so. I, I saw these colors. You know, I could see how he could see this. And so uh, we went to Auvergne, which is where he's buried, he and his brother, Theo. Um, we went to the south of France, to uh, St. Paul de Mosul, where, where he was near Saint-Rémy, where he, the institution, it's actually very beautiful there. And, and he actually was not upset to be there because they allowed him to paint still. And so you walk around that area and you see all the olive fields, the olive trees, that he painted um, in the Alpeel, the, the small mountains that were there. So if I were actually working on the film, you know, I'd be slowing down a little. I'd probably be taking my time a little bit more, but you know, how I'm painting this right now is, is very much how Van Gogh would paint in the field. I mean, he just would approach it with, with passion and gusto. And he's, you know, he's painting the movement he sees. He, he also understands the power of the dark values in the sky and so on. And he's probably mixing a lot of his colors as he goes. I'm trying to think what else I can say. So a lot of questions I get are like, um, so where are all the paintings? What happened to the paintings that you all did? And um, of course they became the property of Breakthrough Film Studios as is the animation that, you sh that was shown. Um, and the thing is when I do a, when you do a scene, you'd paint maybe, you know, a hundred paintings for a scene, but since you're scraping and taking photos of the same scene each time, you're just moving the paint and you only have one painting left for that whole scene. So um, some of those paintings went on exhibit, went on tour all over the, all over the, all over Europe. I don't think it ever came to the States. And this, this scene was one of them that went on tour, which was pretty cool. I think they sold some of the other ones um, in order to help 
make money to finance the film. The paint we used actually is the same paint I'm using today. It's this, uh, and I, I'm not making money off this, it's this Van Gogh brand paint um, that's made by Royal Talents. And it wasn't just because they wanted to have paint with the same name. Um, I've been using that paint for years before I worked on the film. They actually put out some bids for a paint manufacturer and they did a lot of tests for the paints. And they found that this paint actually was um, the most economical uh, and the best kind of consistency, real buttery. You know, it had to stay wet for a long time so that we could keep moving around and scraping it off. Um, so this was the paint they ended up choosing for the film, which is kind of cool. The question is, can I talk a little bit more about scraping the paint? So here's what would happen. So let's say this was the first frame that was all finished. And the board is probably like this big, actually. Then what I that we, we had these high resolution cameras up above us on scaffolding and we, our boards and everything were all bolted down and so that nothing would move. The camera was zoomed in exactly where it needed to be and it would take a picture or I would press a button that would make it take a picture. And then as, as you know, the character or as I'll show you in a minute, as the birds would move, you know, as things would move, we would have to scrape off, say, Armand's arm when he's getting ready to throw the stick and move it because his arm is, is starting to do this, right? So we'd scrape it, we'd move it. When it moves, you have to paint where his arm used to be. You have to paint the field where his arm used to be. So it's very complicated and very confusing. And each time we we create that movement and scrape it off with a palette knife or something, and repaint it because if you just kept putting it on top, the paint's still wet, obviously, because it's oils, and, and you just create mud, everything would just start getting mushed together and you would lose that beautiful brushwork that Bingo was so famous for. So we had to scrape some of the paint off and just repaint and repaint. That's why we used oils, because it would stay wet and workable for a long enough time for us to, to keep moving it. So it's a very good question. Actually, I, I wanna throw in a few things. I'm a perfectionist. So I'm gonna throw, throw in a few of these light notes that I'm seeing here. Uh, another good question. Were you given a choice on what paint you would make? Great question. Was I given a choice on what scenes I wanted to paint? Absolutely not. <laughs> and so it was quite an honor that Dorota, the director, chose me to paint this scene because it's iconic and it's my favorite and it was her favorite. And that's why she was so picky about it though. No, we weren't. Um, and the funny thing is, is you know, I, I'm probably a little more of a landscape painter than anything else. Um, but for this, when I did the test, I did a painting, I did some animation of Armand. Um, and I guess they liked the way I painted faces. So they had me do, um, one of the scenes I did was with the gendarme, a close up of the gendarme when he's in the police station talking with Armand, because Armand has beaten somebody up and he's gotten into trouble. Um, and so, and then the other scene I did besides this one, I did three with the gendarme, and then I did a scene of Armand in Dr. Cachet's garden, um, a close up of his face as well. So I guess they kind of liked how I did faces which is funny because I, again, I'm not really a figure portrait painter. All right, I'm fussing now, that's probably good enough. So let's say that this was my first frame is what we called it. So I could rest, you know, I got the first frame done, the director approved it, I sent her a photo of it. Now it's time to start doing the animation. And now I have to mess with it again. And, you know, I just painted it, so. So here's this cool little tool. And again, I don't get paid by these people. I don't even know who makes it, but I was lucky enough to bring this tool with me, not even knowing I was gonna do the scene with the birds, but this little tool, it's like a rubber thing and you can scrape paint off with it pretty easily. So this was real handy for painting the crows because they kept moving. Every time a wing moved up, you had to repaint what was under the wing. You had to scrape off what was there before. So let me show you just quickly um, I need some more of this really dark paint. I don't think Van Gogh used a lot of black actually, but this Prussian blue is such a dark blue that it reads as black. So I'm going to take a little bit of a smaller brush. Things 
up. And um, I'm gonna, so this Prussian blue is what I'm using now and it's almost black. It just reads like black. So I'm gonna just get a smaller brush and here's how I did my crows. Now this won't look exactly like the animation, but so Armand has just thrown the stick. And so really when the crows first appear, there, it just sort of looks like that. It doesn't look like anything, but you take a picture of that and you add it to the crow getting bigger coming out of the field, it begins to look like birds flying away. And of course, Van Gogh's crows were very simplified. You know, you can see in the reference photo, they're just maybe three or four strokes for the wings. So I would, I would paint the bird, maybe there's another one coming out of here, right? I take a picture. If you forgot to take a picture and you changed everything, you'd, you'd really have problems. <laughs> so, and so that's when my little tool would come in handy. And so the crow's coming out. So it's such a dark color, you know. So now I'm just scraping that out. Scraping this one out. I'm going to repaint it. So maybe the, you're starting to see, you know, the wings coming out. I'll repaint this one and start to come out. And then I have to, of course, Repaint the place where I scraped. So, and, and the real tough thing is, if you repaint it too differently, it's going to be noticeable because, you know, it's going to be noticeable because it wasn't the same as before. So that was the real hard part. You kind of had to remember, you know, what was underneath it, what was there before, and how did it look. Uh, so repaint, repaint. Okay, so then I put my birds in, take a picture of that, and I gotta scrape them off yet again. But the beauty of oil is, you know, you can always cover up, cover that up again. So then I would take and and this would be the same as you know, if I were painting Armand as his arm is moving, and so on and so forth. And then maybe as they're coming out, maybe there's another bird coming out. So then I also got to repaint the sky, try to remember how those strokes were, and so on and so forth. So, so you can see why we were in our little cubicles for you know eight, at least eight to ten hours every day working on this, sometimes till late at night. So yeah, so that's what would happen. I would keep going and just, you know, you put more in, you put one in here, you know, that sort of thing. And that's not really the right color. Before I forget, the one thing I did want to talk about, this was pretty cool. And this is what I learned about animation is, so this scene is outdoors, right? It's supposed to feel like it's windy, it's stormy, right? So the wheat's blowing, the clouds are probably moving. And so one of the techniques I learned to do is called boiling. It's an, anima it's an animation technique where, you know, as I'm working on painting the birds flying away, as I'm working on Armand moving at the same time, and he was carrying this bag that just kept swaying. And, you know, I just wanted to say, hold still, which is so I can just, um, so as I'm doing all that, I also need to remember maybe every two or three frames to just, you know, take a clean brush and touch the wheat, maybe here, maybe here, you know, maybe take and do something to the cloud. Not too much. If you overdo it, it's going to not look right because you're going to go from one frame, you know, with the cloud here, and you wouldn't want to move the cloud over here to the next frame because it just would be a huge movement, right? Wouldn't be natural. But if you just touch ever so gently, something in the field or something in the sky. Then as you're taking your photographs and moving along, that registers as just some slight movement, like the weed is blowing in the wind or the cloud is moving just ever so slightly. So there were a lot of things. That's why my supervisor said animation is concentration. There were so many things that you had to keep in mind. Um, and especially with a face, you know, um, you wouldn't want to make too many parts of the face move too much um, because it just wouldn't look natural. So you had to just gently move ahead 
we had to move all the brush strokes. Um, another funny story was during our, our test period, we were, many of us were animating the scene of uh, Marguerite, played by Saoirse Ronan in the film, and she had all these curls in her hair. And as we were trying to move her head, it was really hard to move those strokes without messing with the curls too much. So watching the animation back, it became obvious that a lot of us were making her hair curls just sort of do this. <laughs> so we began to talk about her as Marguerite with the twirly hair. So that was funny. But one of the scenes that I did for the gendarme, uh, the actor was Martin Herdman, and he's a real ruddy complexion. And so I, I just couldn't help but see that ruddiness in his face. And so as I kept animating, his face would sort of get redder and redder. So it was good that our supervisors were kind of checking our work because he would come and say, hey, you know, back up on the red face a little bit. So I did. So yeah, good question. Um, is there a certain way you hold your brush? The question is, is there a certain way I hold my brush? When I paint normally, there's a reason the brush is long. It's so that you hold it from the in and you don't get to like, this is like a pencil. You know, you're not doing a drawing, you're being expressive. Um, so you hold it from the end of the brush. However, that said for the animation, it was so precise. The scene was so different than how I painted or how Van Gogh painted. You know, so for the animation, yes, I had smaller brush. I had a brush way smaller than this. Um, and so that, you know, for those movements with faces or, or figures, um, I would sort of choke up on the brush a little bit more and be a little more precise and a little more careful. I'm sorry, the question was, doggone it. The question was, um, now that I understand the techniques of animation, is there any plans for a short film of my own? I would love to if I had the equipment, I mean, but to produce something like that, I mean, not only did it take a lot of artists, but it took a lot of people in a production room, um, the actors, I never mentioned this, but they actually had the actors for only about 10 days. They could film the live action with the actors and then we could work from that footage, you know? So, so there's a lot involved in it. I'd love to learn a little bit more about animation. I'd love to do just little snippets of my paintings moving, um, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna work on that, but I'm not gonna do a uh, feature length film for sure. Great, so they're going to they're gonna show the animation a few times at the end of this, and then um, I believe they're probably going to edit this and maybe put it up on YouTube at some point, um, so if you weren't able to be here live or if you want to revisit some of it, you had to leave early, so, so yeah, enjoy, and thank you so much. <laughs>